everybody. I pray this video finds you blessed. Don't mind my messy. She's running around snorting. Are you going to lay down? Are you going to lay down? No, she's going to walk around, of course. So this week, we're going to do another paint pour with Arteza's Pouring Paints. They are awesome, already pre-mixed, ready to go, so you can pour and not have to add anything to it if you don't want to. I'm going to take a plain old Magnolia Bowl Blank and turn it into... So stick around and watch how you can do it too. I mounted this Magnolia bowl blank with a waste block that I had hot glued some um, foam to the inside of it. And I make sure that when I rough out my blanks that I put tenons on them, number one. Those are usually best and a lot easier to um, true up once you have to um, mount it back up and return it. And I also make sure that when I originally do the um, roughed out process, I put an indentation in the center with my tailstock. So when later after it dries, I remount it. It's a lot easier to get it trued up with use my parting tool to mark out where I want my rim to be and I'm kind of just guesstimating on how thick that's going to have to be um, because of my paint pour and my resin that I'm going to add to it. When hollowing out bowls or anything, um, even though it's a dry piece of wood, it's always best to establish the rim. So I always try to work on the rim first and then work on the thickness for the rest of the bowl because the more wood you remove, the more that wood is going to start to flex. And depending on the type of wood will determine how much of a flex you're actually going to get.
If you'd like to try out Brad's sanding paste and his tongue wax finish, I'll put the link in the description below for his Etsy store and also his website so that way you can contact him if you have any questions about his finish. It is a great product and I am so thankful he sent some to me to try out. I'm taping off, gosh Missy, she's snoring. I'm taping off the um, the bowl part where I'm going to paint, not quite the rim yet, because I don't want any of the wax to get onto the area I'm going to paint. I don't want anything to interfere the adhesion of my base coat and of the um, resin finish as well. I'm using that same piece of tape to now tape around the rim. I don't want to get, uh, I make a big mess when it comes to paint, so I don't want paint to get on my rim um, and try to just protect that as much as possible. Now during the resin process, you want to make sure that you peel that tape off before the resin hardens, otherwise you're going to have a resined taped in rim, just a heads up. I'm painting the bowl with a just a white base coat. One, it gives a little smoother of a surface, even though I did sand up to 400. It gives a little bit more of a smoother surface for the paint to glide down. And normally it works best when it's wet, but I had painted this and then um, did the pour the following day. So the paint was really, really dry. I'm using a liquid silicone. It's actually a treadmill lubricant. I'll put the link in the description below for it. It's, I purchased it on Amazon. And what that does is it causes, or it's supposed to cause cells. Cells are like this um, separation, neat separation. It just looks like an oil spill kind of separation with oil and water in your paints. So you get really cool designs. Now it's somewhat evident in my final product uh, but it looks more evident in flat pieces. So I'm still going to try to perfect the method. I'm not going to give up on it yet. I'm still trying to figure out how to get the paint to have a little more exaggerating cells and, and then once I achieve that I'll definitely share it with you and then obviously share with you how I finally got it. I just went ahead and drilled multiple size holes in the bottom of this cup and I'm doing something called a dirty pour where I pour all the paints in one cup and then pour that cup into or over top of my piece. You could either do it just straight or you can pour it into this cup here. I find that this method adds more of the color to spread out so you get um, multiple colors in one small area if that makes any sense. It's not like my first pour where I poured things directly into the cup and then those chunks of paint kind of like you know slowly mixed not majorly mixed if I'm speaking English to y'all right now. And so I, I like this method for smaller pieces because then you get more colors and more um, movement going on in the paint. And the larger pieces I feel that would do best with, say, a pour that's directly, you know, from the paint bottle uh, into whatever is going to deliver the paint to your piece. And it, that will give it a um, bigger kind of pattern design, I guess. I don't know exactly how to explain it, but... Um, I was very satisfied with this. It does kind of look lumpy, um, but it is not. I assure you that is just the silicone causing the separation of the paints. Um, and so it gives it that depth. But when it completely dried, it was all smooth, except for you can kind of feel the grit of the glitter that I put on there. 
and so other than that it was completely smooth I'm just mounting it um, to clean off the tenon because I didn't tape the tenon off and that way I can turn it around and just finish my finishing process I'm cutting along the bottom rim to get the tape off because if I were to peel this tape without creating that cut line, it would just peel the paint right off the bowl. Um, so just be very, very cautious when peeling your tape lines off because it could cause um, the paint to rip off. And I didn't apply um, tape to the rim during the resin process because I have had <laughs> experience with trying to get painter's tape off um, of a piece after resin has completely dried on it. And let me tell you, that's no fun. I first applied the two to one slow set um, as a finish, and I probably should have just went ahead with the fast set. And the reason why I say that is because I used the two to one slow set because the air inside of the wood um, wants to escape, you know, underneath the resin, just like if you were to do a pour and the fast set sets up too fast to allow that air to escape and the slow set gives it just enough time even if you apply sanding sealer a lot of times that happens but i wasn't thinking thoroughly and i used um, the two to one slow hardener when i could have just used the fast hardener this is a sealed piece i wasn't gonna have to worry about any air from the wood coming up through the resin and because of the silicone in it and it i'm I did not clean it off very well. The resin just separated. So I didn't sand because I was afraid um, of how large the separation in the in the finish was that I was just going to end up sanding into the paint and messing up the rim. So this time I just painter's tape around the rim um, because I was just going to slop this on as thick as I could get it to go without it coming off and use the fast set so that way it cures within about an hour and I would be done with it. <laughs> After so many times, you're just gonna like, I'm done with it, but it is worth the effort. The finish that the Total Boat um, resin gives is, is just beautiful dimension. And you can add more coats for more dimension. It just gets more and more depth to the piece. And I have found when you're doing a finish like this, um, when I don't sand in between, it sticks just fine. I don't have any issues with peeling or anything else. So this is what it looks like the next day. I'm just checking it over, making sure no gnats decided to join my party because that's normally what happens. Gnats or mosquitoes or... Gosh, Missy. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm trying to do this voiceover and uh, clearly Missy is um, trying to sleep. Anyways, so I'm just taking the... Um, the tenon off and I'm going to resin my sticker on just to seal this up really good make sure there's no paint exposed and there's no way for water or moisture or anything to get trapped in between the bowl and the resin I haven't used any other finish on these types of paint pours before so if y'all have a finish that you like to use that's good and durable please share in the comments below I'd love to hear your ideas your tips and your suggestions So here is the finished product. Boy, did that turn out awesome. This video doesn't capture it very well because of my light that I have to use for videoing in the house. Kind of, you can see the, anyways. Oh man, that just turned out really awesome. I love it and I wanted to keep some of the wood in here so I did my best to preserve that rim 
And then for the bottom, I just went ahead and filled it with fast set resin with my stickers. These are not um, medallions or metal or anything else. They are just stickers that I purchased from Vistaprint. I'll put the link in the description below. And the reason why I decided to go with resin on the bottom is because this paint will peel and chip. And if you don't put a good hard finish on it, um, it also will wipe away with denatured alcohol. So you have to be very careful and make sure you seal up any of the edges where the paint is going to be because um, it's it's possible, especially being a bowl like this, that it could, it could peel off. So I feel like the shiny um, really helps show off the dimension of the colors that's already in there. When it's matte, it kind of just, it doesn't, pop to me like it does with gloss and maybe I'll experiment with some maybe some matte finishes later on down the road just to kind of you know different effects but for now I'm kind of stuck on the glossy that is that I hope you all enjoyed the video I hope it encouraged you to really experiment with all different types of mediums and there are so many things you can do and they are so fun too I hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching I I'm so thankful for all my subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Um, yeah. So pray y'all have a wonderful weekend. Take care and God bless. She's eating the cat food and the cat poop. And that's what happens when you eat cat food and cat poop. You end up getting skin rashes. Yeah, I keep trying to tell her, but no. She's over there itching herself like crazy because that's what you get for eating cat poop. Don't go in there eating cat food now. <laughs>